What are you thinking? Here, here's, here's, Tell me your problems. Here's what I wonder. <laughs> here's what I wonder. What was the first pickup that you had experience with on a bass guitar? What was the first pickup that you played? A jazz style pickup, jazz style setup on a on a status bass. <laughs> do you say? Oh, you did it, dude! You did. Do you say status? status? status. Yeah, we say status. Yeah. <laughs> which is status status yeah. it was like yes. a, a, a ash bodied bolt on cheap status bass with jazz pickups that's the sort of like the first sounds cool well that's the first one that i could play it like i took home but i was making basses as well so i did have you know like experience with the basses that we were making as well Overwater, baby Dude, let Sand me switch off this heat off. all day. I'm gonna have to switch this this heat off. It's like the it's like I'm sitting in the sun right now. Wait, there. <laughs> dude, I would give anything to be sitting in the sun right now. That would be I would give anything to be in a warm place right now. Are you free? Is it is it super cold in Minneapolis? It, it, we we just got another monster dump of snow too. I think overnight we got like five new inches of snow. It's insane. <laughs> This that winter has amazing. been the snowiest winter. I mean, I don't know, but I'm gonna just say it. It could just be crap. I, I think. I think I've just been the peddling so many winter of all time. Just, yeah, yeah, just so so much misinformation. I realize about myself that I am full of hyperbole. I'm like the best coffee of all time, <laughs> the most amazing base of all time, Absolutely. the snowiest winter. But but it's it is how I feel. I feel those things in the moment. That's probably dangerous for me. But yeah, man, it's been very snowy. Yes. But you did some sledding, right? You've been yeah, out with yeah, Dashley. Dude. Sledding. Yeah. We got that GT snow racer. Oh, man. We were ripping down oh, the yeah. hill. Thing is dangerous. So fun, though. Yeah. It's all good. I, I like the snow. It's just a long winter here. We don't get out of winter until after March. <laughs> six months of winter. <laughs> six months, pretty much. Crazy. It's like five or six. Yeah. Where it's like you could pretty much categorize it as winter. Yeah. Friday. But you know what warms anyway. me up, dude? Yeah, you know what warms what, me pickups? up? The pickups? Pickups? <laughs> <laughs> the sweet, sweet warmth <laughs> the, of an Alnico 5 magnet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude. Custom you've wound bobbins. Right, I'm going to add it to the list, <laughs> magnets, because, like, that is a big magnet. Dude, okay. you, just, just real quick now that we're on that, do you know okay. what Alnico is? No. I just found, you? Scott, I, I'm about to blow your mind. I just found out about this, and I can't. I wish I could give credit where credit is due, because I found out, maybe it was at Spectre, Alnico, which I thought was like, I don't know, a type of metal. Well, it is, but it is the, what's the table? The periodic table of elements. You know how everything has a two-letter designation? Alnico yes. is aluminum, aluminium, nickel, yep. and cobalt. al ni co Oh, it, yes. <laughs> and it is the percentages. So an Alnico pickup is like, you know, X amount. I don't know the percentages, but it's X amount of aluminium, X yeah. amount of nickel and X amount of cobalt. Make that pickup. Alnico. Okay. Okay. And you say so, Alnico. You put the emphasis in the middle. Alnico. Yes. We Alnico. say Alnico. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so I've just added it to the list because obviously we're talking about pickups today, but st some of the stuff we we're going to be talking about is like single coil versus humbucker, yeah. P bass pickup, jazz bass pickups, um, oddball pickups. Yeah, and I'm sorry active, I got the yeah, yeah, we're going to go. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to We're going to go into the active versus passive thing. I know it's not really pickups, but I think it's worth we talk about it anyway. And there are actually active pickups out there. We'll get into that. Yeah. Um, and then magnets as well, because, yeah, I didn't actually think about that, uh, but I've got a particular, um, I might have to just sort of like have a search on my phone, actually, a particular bass that I play, and it has a P bass pickup on it. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's, it's I think it's Al, Al Nico, Al Nico magnets. Yeah. May, I like, yep. What's the other one? What's the other version? Neodymium? Neo, Neo, oh my god, I can't speak today. That one, the neo magnets, right? Yeah. So, is it? Is that what the other magnets are? Oh, the, oh no, it's ceramic, dude. It's oh, ceramic. Cer okay, okay. Which is like a like an EMG. Yes, a ceramic. 
pickups. Yes. yes. So we've got the Alnico and we've got the ceramic pickups, and they do sound slightly different. Obviously, you know, people have come here for the knowledge. Oh, dude, I can... just I just had this fear that I'm that we are about <laughs> to spread lies. <laughs> well, dude, what I'm definitely just... gonna spread is I'm gonna I'm gonna spread there will be interesting stuff in here for sure. But I'm yes. also gonna be open and transparent about my own kind of I guess sort of like gaps in my knowledge because yes. there is definitely gaps in my knowledge, um, and, uh, specifically around magnets. Actually, that's the the, the bit that sort of uh, that kind of like eludes me a little bit, and sort of like the series parallel thing. Mm. Like again, I'm a little bit under. I got that, dude. I got. I have feel you good got about that? that one? I finally have it. It eluded me for a long time, but I have it. So I'm adding it to the list. Series <laughs> versus parallel yeah and yeah. we're going to talk like single core versus humbuckers p-based pickups oddball pickups and um, active versus pass- passive different magnet types jazz based pickups and uh, did i say oddball pickups anyway we're gonna be Ooh, talking baby, pickups. that's a big old list that's a big old we're, list so same question back to you what was yeah. your like what was the first pickup you played and i guess i'm just going to ask the question did you even know no <laughs> no i had no idea know? it was a p base but it was like a like a copy i think the brand was either like honer it wasn't hofner it was an h brand honer which i think they make like harmonicas yeah. Uh, yeah. i think it was a honer or it might have even been a harmony but it was a red p base with a black pick art it looked like the Nate Mandel model that you had for a Got while it. yeah yeah yeah. Um, yeah and it was it, I just remember thinking it was probably cool, but I remember thinking it was a cheap rental base, so it had to be crappy. And I wanted an Ibanez or a, you know, I, I ended up getting a Yamaha RBX that also had yeah. a P pickup. Oh, then yeah, it dude. J pickup in the bridge. So it was a PJ configuration. PJ. Mm, oh, oh this so is going to be a long now, conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if you're listening to this podcast, you probably have some idea of what pickups are and what they do. But I just, oh, I love this thing of like, there's this magnet, right? And then the the metal string that you pluck vibrates. And then the magnet picks up that vibration, sends it through the wires, through the copper, out Fantastic. of your output jack, through the cable. Witchcraft. And just like fucking magic happens, dude. Yeah, yeah. Magic. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. Like pickups are, hmm, and they it's really crazy, do. Yeah. yeah, we'll talk about all these types, but they really do have a huge impact on your sound. What they're made out of, if they're single coil or humbucking, where they are on your instrument. I mean, even an inch of movement one way or another with a pickup ch- completely Makes changes yeah. how your tone is. And so, you know, I think if you talk to most builders, the, the reason we're having this conversation, is it was brought up in a forum or online or uh, on social media where someone was like, oh, I'd love it if Scott and Ian would talk about pickups, the world no of pickups. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Lydia, Lydia found it. Yep. Um, oh, wicked. I think a lot of people have asked, actually, and just our take on this. But the thing that I want to say is they really do matter in terms of what contributes to your sound the most. Now, I don't know yeah, if I would say yeah. they contribute to the sound the most, but it is one of the biggest factors. It's huge. It's huge. huge. Yes. Huge. Yes. Obviously, hands, your body playing the instrument, right, is, you know, you, you. we all have heard, like, oh, a great player can make a crappy bass sound great. Yes. But if we remove that thing that, you know, it's like, ah, Jacko could, ah, Victor Wooten could... If we think about the components of the instrument that make the biggest difference, I'm saying that the strings and the pickups are top. Now, I don't know which which of those two things for me are more important. We should probably have an episode of the world of strings as well. Oh, yeah. But I think that pickups and strings are very important. So if it's the top two for me, it's either number one or number two. I'm going to put it in number two. It's the second. I'm going to go out on a limb, dude. Go out on a limb. The second most important (laughs) thing (laughs) to your tone. And that's why we're talking about it, because it's important. It's important. It really matters. And you switch it up. You switch up the brand, the style, the placement. It has a wide impact on your sound. So I just wanted to say that first. It's why it matters. Yeah, like even if the the pickups are the same, to your point, and they're just moved by like half an inch, like let's Dude. say a 60s jazz bass versus a 70s jazz bass sound different just because yes. of that tiny movement the of the pickups. Yes. And do not worry if you're listening to this and you're like, 
Holy shit balls. <laughs> I cannot even tell the difference between my neck pick and my bridge pick of when I'm playing my bass. Do not worry. I was that person. I can yes. remember like playing all of the different bass. I used to work in a bass shop. I can remember play, playing. I just started playing bass. Yeah. I was playing all of the different basses. I was like, sound all the same to me. <laughs> kind of, oh, dude, it's, it's classic, dude. It's classic Bob Allison where like he was over for one Christmas and I showed him a bass that I just got or something. And he was like, oh, God, Ian, don't they kind of all just go <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. so funny. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But yeah. I, if you zoom out, it's still a bass sounds like a bass, or it should. But boy, if you A-B compare, baby, there's a lot of difference in the sound and, of these and, pickups. Yeah. And when people start, their ears start developing a little bit, maybe you're a year in, two years yes. into playing the bass, you're really going to start hearing the differences between these these different basses. Big um, time. And also there's sort of like great YouTube videos as well where you can just, you don't have to play, you can just sit and listen to a comparison. So if you yes. go to, uh, if you go to YouTube and you write, bass comparison video yeah uh, we've actually you'll you'll find our bass comparison video there's another one that somebody else did um and it's gonna you know we're gonna be playing lots of different basses and to ian's point when you hear the differences between all of those basses a large part of the difference in sound is down to the pickups it's not only yes. the pickups yes it's the strings yes it's the body wood and all of those different things but the pickups really do make the difference so if yep. you are sort of like just starting out and you're like I can't hear the difference between any of these bases. Go listen to one of them bass comparison videos sure. and you yes. will hear a difference between the bases. Yeah. And it and it takes you away from having to play the bass yourself and plugging it in shops and stuff like that. So That's a good call. I like that. Yeah. We've put so we put the case forward. Pickups are really important. I'm really interested. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite pickup combination? JJ. Uh, w without a shadow of a doubt. It's just the combo I know the best. So I started out on a P pickup, which is like a precision bass, which, you know, everybody's probably seen them. It looks like the Tetris piece that is hard to place anywhere. <laughs> it's, it's the yeah. Tetris piece that's impossible to put, where it's you've got these two rectangles that are offset from one another. Um, and it's a humbucker, meaning that you don't get any of that pesky single coil buzz. They sound really thick and awesome. Uh, but even though I started there... I ended up loving this two jazz bass pickups when I when I, totally I discovered lost the you. jazz bass. Dude, oh, dude, I sorry. totally lost you. <laughs> okay, are we back? Are we back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're back. So what you were saying? You were saying so JJ's your favorite. Yeah, JJ's my favorite. Even though I started on a P, you know, and it's those are the two rectangles that are you know offset from one another. They're a humbucker. Yeah. They get rid of the pesky sixty cycle hum. Uh, it's a strong, awesome rock and roll sound. I know you love a P bass. I never really bonded with that sound early when I finally went to a bass that was more like a jazz style, a jazz bass style instrument, two single coils um, where you can use them together or you can use them independently of one another. I got really excited about those combinations and like, oh, Oh, the bridge pickup sound is going to be cool for this kind of thing. It's like tighter and snarlier. And ooh, the neck pickup on a jazz bass. It took me a while yeah, to discover yeah. that. But that's actually one of my favorite sounds of all time is just, just the soloed neck pickup on a jazz bass. It sounds a little bit like a P bass, uh, but it has its own character, and I love it. So JJ for me, that's if I had to pick one thing, that would be it for sure. What so J yeah, so yeah, yeah. JJ for you. So jazz bass pickups yep. in sixties spacing. Let's go nerdy. Sixties yeah, spacing or seventies. Well, and what Scott's talking about here, if you don't know, is you know, in the sixties the two jazz bass pickups that Fender used were spaced uh, a bit, you know, a certain distance. And then in the seventies, they moved the bridge pickup back very slightly. Towards the bridge, yeah. Towards the bridge. I think the neck pickup stayed in the same location. Could be false, but I think it, it did. No, it, it did, yeah. It, it did. did, okay, you know, yeah. yeah. And then so that rear pickup moved back. Do you know the measurement, how far it moved back? A like, was it? Yeah, tiny, like a tiny bit, right? It's not like a an squidge. inch or something. Just it's like squidge. half an inch. Okay. Squidge. <laughs> a squidge, a smidge, a squidge, yeah. a squidgen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, even, yeah, dude, e okay even though my favorite bass in the world is a 78 jazz bass in the beautiful color antigua uh yeah. 
I prefer sixties pickup spacing. Huh. Um, yeah. Like when the both bases are, when the both pickups are on, um, or even just using the bridge pickup, I like the sound, a slightly fuller sound of the bridge pickup soloed in a 60s position when it's slightly closer. Um, but right. that's, that's just me. That said, I, I'm a walking hypocrite because walking hypocrisy, because I love a seventies, uh, jazz bass that has that spacing, but I yeah. almost wish that that pickup were a little closer. I think I would use it more if the bridge um, pickup weren't as close to the bridge. How about Got it. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. But, but, to, but to your point earlier, when you're playing your jazz basses, how much of the time when you're on a gig or yeah, let's say gigging or, yeah. you know, recording, how much of the time are you using both pickups versus just the neck pickup? I use both pickups if I'm doing something that needs to have that slightly scoop thing. So maybe a slap thing or something with a pick where I want the character of the top end to sound a certain way. But that's probably 15% of the time. So 85%, 85 of the time, of the time, got it. I use the neck pickup. or And I don't always blend all the way to the neck pickup. I just sort of crack the the jazz pickup off a bit so that it, okay. you know, so that it like... Uh, the bridge pickup, yeah. It, I'm sorry. Yes, I I crack off the bridge pickup a bit so that it favors the neck pickup. Yes. Right. Oh, so you're not taking all the way off. Not, not all the way. Sometimes yes, but sometimes I like just that little like lean toward the neck pickup sound. So you've got the neck on 100, percent and maybe the the uh, the bridge pickup on like 50, percent 60, 70, whatever. But sometimes yeah, all the way off. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Something yeah, in there. Yeah. yeah. That is my favorite yeah. sound ever. And we've talked about this before, right? Like I did a gig we were talking about a few weeks ago, and I think I took the 70s jazz. Yeah, that 70s jazz over there, and I played all the entire. Well, maybe it's like. 90% of the the gig with just the neck pickup. Yes. Because it just feels really nice and fills a lot of air, a lot of kind of like bandwidth sonically yeah. Yeah. when you're playing live for me. That's why I really like it. Oh, I do um, too. Yeah. And I yeah, do they, like P basses as well. Like I, I do love P basses. I think yes. that um, they've definitely got their place. I sometimes struggle with them on gigs in terms mm. of clarity, especially some t some of the gigs I'm doing, you know, and it might be whatever, you know, and there's, it's like, I play a lot of, I guess, sort of like, you know, jazz orientated improvisation jazz. stuff, but definitely not like, ding, 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 like yeah. not that yeah. thing, you right. know, it's kind of, it's not that, but there's definitely, you know, moments in time where they're like, yeah, I have to like play a solo and stuff like that. And it's yes. hard to, project that sound that you're creating on a P bass. It kind of mm. just, it's too, it's, there's just not enough clarity. So I've, I've struggled with that. And that's why on a gig, like for most, you know, like I, especially with the stuff that I've been playing recently, I definitely, you know, edge towards playing a jazz bass. So I can, pl I can get that neck pickup sound. Yes. But when I need it, I can like dial in that bridge, bridge pickup and it can get, have more of a direct sound and actually yeah. probably put the bridge pickup up full and then dial back the neck pickup a certain extent yes. and probably drop the tone control down as well to get that sort of like more kind of like mid, almost like exactly, a horn or something. That horn light that cuts yeah. through, yeah. And that's yeah. a really popular thing that, you know, people will have heard many people do. You might not know it, but it's like kind of like a really popular thing to do to get that real honky sound that cuts through is bridge pickup all the way up, neck pickup yep. all the way off, and then tone dialed back. At varying kind of like, you know, different degrees, sometimes all the way up, but sometimes like half. Yeah. It's a really interesting sound and great for soloing, especially live when you need to cut through. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So um, my second question, and I think that you might have already answered it anyway, um, is what like humbuckers versus single coils. Mm. So if somebody doesn't know what a humbucker is, it's right. just generally fatter. It looks fatter and a single coil is thinner. So a, a, a jazz bass has a single coil pickup um, and the uh, humbucker looks like kind of sort of like twice as fat as that. Yeah. And that's not always the case. I mean, oh, this, it's so crazy because you can do a bunch of things with to hide coils. So a single coil can look like a humbucker and vice versa. But essentially yeah. a single coil is... Um, 
will not ever buck the hum. And I love that they named a humbucker because it, it, it does, like you it say, it does <laughs> what it does on the tin. Like it does what it says yeah, on the tin. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So if you have a single coil pickup, they sound really beautiful and open. There's an airy top end. They're lovely. But sometimes you're in a room or you're by some lights and you, zzz, right? you get that yeah. you get that buzz and humbuckers aim to eliminate that. And that's, even you know, early. That's what Leo Fender did. The first P-Bass was actually a single coil bass and then that was in 51 and then 1957 he changed the p bass to the p bass pickup that we all know and love today which is the split coil yes a humbucker and they have a darker bigger there's more mid-range there's maybe slightly more low end more output but less clarity but no not no but very little hum um yeah. and oh man i mean i've I have a bunch of bases that have both. I prefer the openness and sound of a single coil. I love it. But there are cases where I've been on stages or in studios where I go, damn, I wish I didn't have this bass. Case in point, I got to play on the David Letterman show years ago with an artist from Minneapolis called Jeremy Messersmith. You can find it on YouTube if you like. Um, it was one of the coolest experiences ever, but I brought my Guild Starfire, which has this beautiful, giant, big single coil pickup. Yeah. And that sucker was humming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, in my, my, like I plugged in my bass and they were like, Let, let's hear bass. It was like this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. And they were basically like, do you have another bass? And I was like, no. Oh, no. And I mean, you know. So well, you at can least turn it was the... only like a small gig. You know what I mean? Like, we're not... <laughs> I know, dude. And, you know, I ended up turning the tone knob down, and that can mitigate some of it. And then in sections that no one was playing or that I wasn't playing, I turned the bass off, right? But, man, wow. I just – someone on Instagram just hit me up and said, I'm trying to use a Starfire at church, and the sound, the sound guy hates it. What do I do? And I said, oh, dude, I know that deal. Like if yeah, you're in a room yeah. where, you know, where a single coil is buzzing really hard. Yeah. It's, it's a thing to factor in. Um, yeah. but really, really briefly on that, I, then I ran into Will Lee who was playing, you know, bass in that band and I lamented to him and he said, well, hold on. Is it the right bass for the gig? And I said, yeah, yes, it really is. He said, then, then you're fine. He's like, they'll figure it out. And, you know, just roll that tone back a little, roll the volume off when you're not playing. You'd be just fine. I was like, oh, my God. Will Lee, Will's man. awesome, isn't he? made he? me what feel so a... good. Yeah, dude. And he gave you a hug. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, dude, and I, I, I was so stressed about that because I thought I had ruined the whole thing by bringing the wrong bass. And I actually got teary. And I said, can I give you a hug? He's like, come here, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. it was incredible. But, yeah, I think um, the hum can be an issue. I... In, unless there's a point at which the hum of a single coil becomes too intense, but I do kind of like it. I kind of like hearing a bit of hum. It sort of reminds me that we're playing rock and roll. It sounds like Jimi Hendrix to me, or it sounds like Zeppelin, like a little bit of noise in the signal actually uh -huh. feels good to me. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. You know, and that said, there's all kinds of pickups that aim to eliminate that, like humbuckers. Yeah. active, active pickups, right. That are humbuckers or that have hum canceling technology aim to eliminate that stuff. But I, my favorite sound is a single coil. What about yeah. you? Yeah. Same. Really? Single coil, single really? coil all the way. Yeah. But you were yeah. Mr. P bass for so long. I know, but I don't know. Like I do love P basses, but when it comes down to it, I prefer single coils. Really? When it really comes down to it. Yeah, like oh, I love P basses, but for whatever, like it's just something that, like even when I've played a bunch of P basses, even when I was just like, you know, because it's, it's sometimes, sometimes it's sometimes the aesthetic of the instrument that, yeah. I, that I'm attracted to. It's sometimes the overall vibe. Yeah. Um, but it was, especially like if it was a desert, desert island bass, it would have to be something with single coils for well, sure. Well, you brought it up. What? Is it Scott? What, what the desert island bass? Yes. Oh, dude, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going through so like I'm in turmoil at the minute. <laughs> uh, okay, I am okay. In turmoil. But let, let's capture the turmoil. Let's capture the turmoil for this time period. Now, listen. This is just a hypothetical. I'm not actually banishing you to a, a real desert island, but gun to your head in five seconds. I'm going to count it down. You have to say a bass. Are you ready? Five. Yellow four. F bass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. okay. Yellow, yellow F-Base. Yellow F-Base, yeah. Which yeah, yeah. has yeah. single coil pickups in it. Am I correct? Or no? Are they uh-huh. humbuckers? Yeah. Single coil single in the coil, 60s position. Like, like a jazz bass. Yeah. But connected to an active preamp. Correct? Yes, it's got an active preamp in it. Right. Yeah. So, which means. Which I do use, which yeah. I do use. Yes. Which I've got like bass middle and treble and stuff like that, which I do use. But that is the. That's the Desert Island bass. Um, got some other basses that, <laughs> you know, I've got that 70s jazz bass yeah. is a stonker. Stonker. Uh, it's a stonker. I've got an. Uh, have I showed you the Eleva Capolo? Only, <laughs> only in a have. photo. I think only in a. Hold on. Let me go get oh it. Oh my God. The reveal of the Aleva. Now, the bass Scott's going to get Aleva Capolo is this. Oh, he's got it. Oh, I thought I was going to give this big story while you were going to get it, but it was just across the room. It was just across the room. Let me see it. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, it's lovely. I know. Candy it's apple? Nice, Candy yeah. apple red? I don't know what it is. It's kind of like an orangey red. Oh, okay. Like when you see it, it's kind of like a like a sparkle. Can you? Yeah. Gosh, that's it's beautiful. It's like orange man. sparkle. It's got a great feeling neck on it. Like, Do you dig it? I do. Oh. I do. There's there's like a little kick up on yeah, the. Yeah, there's always yeah. a little kick up. I'll tell yes. you the things I don't like about it. So, it's, so what I do like about it is it's got obviously jazz pickups, just to you know to keep us on point with the uh, the conversation. Yes. It's got jazz pickups, um, sounds killer, um, build quality, finish, and stuff like that. Absolutely amazing. Yes, neck feels great. Neck feels like it's satin on the back, no gloss, just like really, really nice, and it's like flat sawn, you know, so it's, you get, it's that vibe, right? Yes. Um, uh, what I don't like about it is that it's got the truss rod is, you see it like it's, it's yeah. down here at the, at the body end and it is a, a crosshead screwdriver. Yep. You know, I'm just like, it kills me. Yeah. Like I cannot alter the truss rod without freaking removing, removing the, the neck. neck. Like shoot I know. me in the freaking face. I know. So, I just want like an Allen key in there so I can, you know, so I can move that. So that. Or a bullet uh, truss rod on the headstock. Or a bullet in the head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. I just, I, re- I really, do- I really dislike it when it's down there. So I really like the bullet, you know, like a truss rod at the top on as the well. On the 70s Js, yeah. Yeah, on the 70s Js, yeah. Um, but it's, it's a killer bass. It's a killer bass, but it is, you know. Oh, yeah. It's got that little got ski that slope bump. thing going. Yeah. It's got that bump, and that is, it's causing me issues. Well, it's something you can have worked on. You can have that bump remedied, but I know what I, you I mean, can. man. It's, yeah. Then it's like you got to bring it in, and then you're wondering who you bring it to. And yeah, I, but that bass, too, also an active jazz bass, right? Connected to a preamp. Exactly. That's yes. active. It's got a bass and a treble on there as well. And so, typically, yeah. if you don't, you know, if, if anybody's listening and they don't know active passive, typically there, uh, the setup is if you have just pickups that are wired to pots, you know, volume, volume, tone, like on a jazz bass, that isn't active. They call that passive electronics. There's no battery powering a preamp yeah. inside the bass versus an active bass where you've got maybe passive pickups, but they're routed into a preamp that gives you EQ flexibility, bass, yeah. middle, treble, or maybe just bass and treble, right? So you can adjust that on the instrument, and then that is sent out, buffered, and sent out via your cable, and then you got to put a battery in that bass. One or two 9 volts, depending on if it's 9 or 18 volts, which I don't think matters yeah. that much, to be honest. Um, but they sound very different. A passive jazz bass sounds very different than an active jazz yeah. bass, even with the yeah. same pickups, Right there's a sheen yeah. that comes a glossy sheen I think that happens yeah, which can be great isn't it? Yeah, yeah it can be yeah. cool but it's also like different like just a case in point the difference between your F bass and my 70s jazz that I had over there yes. right there's just yeah. mine yeah. had like a weird bark to it that some people could think ooh that's really cool or some people could think gross Listen to that weird bark. It's either like, oh, sick. Listen to that bark. Yeah, or yeah, like, gross. Yeah. Listen to that bark. <laughs> you know? it just depends on depends on what you like. You know. Yeah. Yes. And it's interesting as well that, like, for 
studio stuff, I actually prefer passive. Mm. For live stuff, I actually enjoy having the, the yeah, right there on it's the bass. A little horsepower, I, baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. that. If I want to, like, boost that bass a little bit or yeah. boost the mid, you know, I've got it right there. And yes. I do enjoy that. And, and I use it as well. So it's... Uh, it's an interesting, uh, yeah, it's an interesting situation when I'm thinking about what I'm going to use and stuff like that. Like, ultimately, when, you know, the F-Base, it can be turned on to active or passive. Yep. You can do that whole thing. I never do it. I just always use it in active mode. Um, and I haven't really experimented with it so much in terms of, like, putting it in active and passive. But, yeah, I, I, have to, I have to say as well, I love that Gary Willis fretless down here as well. Oh, yeah. That's, like, rocking my world right Yes, now. yes. Like, when you said, what's the Desert Island bass? You thought the Willis, it, maybe, for a minute? It popped yeah. popped in there? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was, that's why I was like, oh, no, because it was so much fun on the ba- on the gig. Wow. It was so much fun. That's it so It was, cool. like, next level, yeah, so Ugh. we'll see. Oh, and, you know, taking, you know, I know we we just did an episode recently ar- around, like, you know, should you, like, taking a gig for free or doing this or that, or, like, how how much should you charge music and money and all that? But just to hear you talk, because in that last episode, you talked about the 15-quid gig, right, that oh, you've yeah. been donated to the drummer. But listen to all it gave you. That gig gave you context to hear your instruments in an ensemble, right? It gave, it made you fall yeah. in love with the Gary Willis Oh, face, yeah, yeah. You know? Like, it was massive. Yeah. yeah. Like sometimes, not not to say that you know you, you should just do gigs for free and that it's not about the money. Obviously, people need to eat and pay rent. If you do that with music, great. But also, gigs are such a great opportunity to hear yourself in context, and that's Amazing, actually yeah. what informs your taste. I think are gigs. It's like yeah. you get a bass, you don't actually know if you like those pickups really until you're on the bandstand. You can love them yeah. in your studio, you know, yeah. teaching lessons, hanging out, playing along to records, but as soon as you get on that gig, oh, dude, you have a worst. different vibe. Yes. Yeah, yes. it's the worst. So what Ian, <laughs> yeah. uh, let me give you some sort of like direct examples of this. People on the podcast might have heard me talk about this before. And this is this is where I guess that um the we said right at the top of this interview that pickups are really important in terms of the sound, right? Yes. But ultimately, you can have like a P bass pickup on something like a P bass. You can have a P bass pickup on another bass, right? And it it doesn't mean that it's going to sound like a P bass. That's true. That's so, true. So, for instance, I, I was doing a um, I was doing a was it a rehearsal or a gig? I can't remember. I know it was a rehearsal. I was doing a rehearsal and I took a fancy pants bass. It had a it was beautifully made. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, like... Brambleberry wood and the finest appointments. Oh, yes. And it smelt like, <laughs> you know, it smelt like the finest. <laughs> um, yes. Anyway, so it was a fa- fancy-ass bass, right? And incredibly well-made. Had a P-bass pickup on it. Mm-hmm. Turn up, and I'm like, play the first tune, I'm just like, oh, just not sitting in the mix right. Mm. Just just doesn't, doesn't... It's like poking through too much it just doesn't it wasn't isn't supporting doing, and fat wasn't yeah it wasn't giving me the breadth in terms of like the sonic spectrum that i was looking for and on the wall was a cheap shit p-based copy uh, that was maybe worth 200 bucks on yes. ebay or something yep. like that yep. no name right you know it was a rehearsal studio so it, you know it had probably been sort of like you know <laughs> pissed on and like all <laughs> kinds of stuff yes, happened to this bass in yes. the past stuff that i wouldn't even want to what i wouldn't want to mention anyway so i got this bass down we went into the the second tune or like re, you know redid whatever tune we were rehearsing at the time and it killed it oh wow and everybody mentioned it everybody was like whoa that's the bass oh, i was wow. like well <laughs> i might i might this might not be the bass but it certainly isn't the bass that i brought with me so <laughs> And interestingly, right. they were both P-Bass pickups. Wow. So, but just very different. And, you know, going on to that sort of like that, talking about maybe the Alnico and the uh, and the ceramic thing as well, like something that I've noticed with my Yamaha BB. Yes. That you've is, got one as well. I sure do. Yep. Right? P-Bass pickup. Yep. Shout out to Jonathan Marin, who inspired both of us to get that. Definitely. So, exactly. Right? So... They don't sound like P basses. I know. Yeah, either. they're like 
they're like brighter for sure. And the emphasis is in a different place. It's like less low mid or something. It's more, yeah. it's more like high mid clarity. It's a, it's a completely different sound. Is it a BB 3000? Yes, BB 3000. Yeah. Someone told me, Scott, it's because they wire those coils differently. Someone on a previous podcast, we were talking about yes. these BB bases and it's not wired. The reason it doesn't sound like a P base is because those coils are wired in in either series or parallel the thing we're talking oh, no. about <laughs> is that what it is i think so <laughs> yes but i i i know what those two things mean i now know what series and parallel means i just don't yeah. know which one the yamaha is yeah, are you looking Got for it. a clip yeah. of something right now? I, I, I was looking for. I read this article, and they actually went into the magnets as well. They oh, said it was oh, maybe, to do with and, the and magnets, it, and it could be that, of course. Yeah, too. right. So I'm not going to spread misinformation, but we, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just going to say that I read a post somewhere. I think it was on Talkbase or something like that, and the guy was like, "Hey, it's it's actually because of the magnets oh, as well. Okay. They use yep. different magnets." Sure, and and I and I have to say that I've definitely experienced that. You mentioned it earlier. I used to have a Nate Mendel P bass. Yes. And that thing, like it was a it's a fender, it's a P bass. Yes. It sounded completely different to a normal P bass. Uh, and it's because it had overwound like Seymour Duncan quarter pounder pickups. Yeah, <laughs> super hot. These pickup. things were like, oh, it was so good. Yeah. That bass Yes. It was so good. Yes. What a sound. And it really did have a completely different sound to other P bases. And, and if you're wondering, overwound, essentially, oh boy, here it goes. Here, here, oh, comes, oh. The, here comes the disinformation machine. But overwound <laughs> refers to the amount of copper that is wound into the bobbin of the pickup. Yes, right? they, so they put more on. They put more right? on, yes. Yeah. And underwound is less. And typically an overwound pickup will be hotter and darker. So, you know, if you overwind a pickup, you have more output and and it's slightly darker. And I used to think, yeah, that would be great. But what I discovered and like overwound, more, hotter. Hey, yes, so, more. Yeah, some people underwind. Them. Yes. You can get underwound pickups. And as underwound well. pickups are a little bit brighter. They're lower in volume. But what I discovered is I thought I liked overwound pickups. And then whenever I would play something that said it was overwound, it always kind of felt like this to me. Like it's it kind of felt like yeah, this to yeah. me. Like it was kind of nasally and loud. That that <laughs> P bass was definitely nasal. Like, yes. man, like it's... So to it, me, it didn't bring yeah. up the bottom. It, like it accentuated the mid-range in a way that I didn't like. And I like underwound pickups. They seem to kind of carve... They, I don't know, they're glassier and beautiful. And then I feel like I can use my preamps and compressors to kind of, you know, get any more juice that I need out of it. But I, I've gone the Check other way. This. Oh, yeah. So, so this is just like, this is that Nate, Men, uh, Nate Mendel P bass. Yeah. You can hear, do you know what you were saying? That, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. Which isn't really like, you know, you don't think about that when you think about the P bass sound. Sure. Um, check this out. Is that you, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Hell yeah. It speaks cool. It's cool, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. That's cool. It's cool. It's a sound that I almost oh, oh, never oh, oh. go for, but in that context, a P, that's like a really nice P bass sound to have because it is poking through. That's exactly yeah. yeah. Like it yeah. If you were like soloing on a, on a on a on a I guess like a regular P bass. Yep. Uh, in that context, it, it could be really hard yeah. to sort of like just to, to to get the clarity of the notes. Yes, dude. People were coming to this podcast. For clarity, mm, and yes. they were coming for you know for us to solve their pickup problems, and all we've done is spread <laughs> just, just spread confusion. <laughs> there, there was there was silt at the bottom of a perfectly good you know lake, and we just stirred it up. <laughs> now it's, now it's just muddy water. <laughs> I mean, man, it, it's too big. It's too big for one it's, episode, it is, and yeah, it's too big it for a hundred episodes. It's. It's wild. I mean, the difference a pickup makes is crazy. And there's, you can hear all about it. 
in terms of talking points, you can read all about it, but you will have misnomers. You'll think, oh, I love active pickups or, oh, yeah. for the longest time too, for me, I was like, oh man, I went through a thing where I started out and I was playing bases that had active electronics, right? We put the battery in and then I shunned that for a long time and it wasn't cool. And I was like, ugh pickup makers like emg i was like yuck gross they're a classic pickup maker right from the maybe late 70s but for sure came into yeah, prominence yeah. in the 80s their pickups are active even without a preamp you have to have a battery to power these pickups ceramic magnets very even sort of compressed sounding but then what i've discovered is coming back and uncovering some of those things that i th thought that i didn't like i shunned them well, now yeah, yeah, when I come yeah. back to EMGs after being apart from them for a while, I'm like, oh, these pickups are badass. Like the pickups <laughs> they use in a Spectre, uh, yeah. like an NS2, like, and that's, that's a PJ combo. That's, you know, where you have a, a, a precision based pickup in the neck position and then a jazz based pickup in the bridge position. It's a really cool sound on a Spectre NS2 with the EMGs. And EMG J's sound really good, but it's very different. It's a very like different, almost sort of produced sound. There's a little more low end. There's a little more top end. The mid range Got character yeah, is different, yeah. and it's it's just so different than a passive pickup. I mean, and you think you might you you think that you're gonna say oh awesome or oh gross, but you don't know until you play it. You have no yeah. clue until you try it and try it even and then even in a band you have to play it in a band. <sighs> It's so interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It's wildly interesting. Yeah. Like one of my favorite players, um, he, uh, you know, that, what's that guy called? That for, one of my favorite players. Can't remember his name. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that guy. Oh, I love that guy too, man. Oh, Just. No, La, La, Lars Daniels. Lars yes, Larry yes, Daniels. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Lars Larry Daniels said he plays that that early 60s P bass. And it, and it sound like his sound is like, so like just old school just mm -hmm. like it's so he's got emgs That's oh what he plays. yeah man. emgs mm -hmm. it's and that in your mind is like really counterintuitive I you're know. like yeah emgs are not like old school sounding at all they're like modern they're this oh. they're that and like you listen to larry and you're like oh shit he just completely decimated any kind of like you know any kind of like thinking i had around that i know and also i saw that he got a new bass over the last year mm. or so he stopped taking that 60s one out maybe he's you know panicking about it getting damaged or something like that so he's got like a more modern looking uh, jazz bass and he swapped out the pickups for emgs <laughs> so yeah, yeah so it's, he obviously feels like that that is a, a key part of his yeah. sound yeah for sure yeah. and i would just say uh, you know i went through these very distinct phases of like these are cool and i like these and i hate these and i think that everybody does that in a way when they're coming up you know the, you you yeah. plant some flags but i would say now my advice if i were to give any to a listener is be very open-minded and just remember that styles of instruments and styles of pickups, they're just lanes. There is no best for rock. There is no best for jazz. There is no best for metal. It's about how you use it. It's in the way that you use it. Use it. Dude, it is. It is. And it's, <laughs> and it's so much about being open. And you might think you hate a Music Man style pickup, like an active humbucker near the bridge. But until yeah. you play a Stingray in a band context, you don't know. So don't yeah. be cool. don't try to be cool guy like I was trying to be and let you know and always like oh yeah it's it's only cool if it's vintage and it's Alnico five don't get hung up I didn't even know what that meant and I I slung that word around like I knew what it meant don't be like me like enjoy the process of hearing a pickup and going oh this would be really cool for X or hearing yeah, that other yeah. pickup and going oh wow. This, I can't see how I would use this, but I hear how it fits in to a certain style yeah, of music. Yeah, like be open yeah. to that because it's yeah. just going to mean you're going to be able to enjoy so many more instruments and pick up styles and brands over the years, find different avenues for them. Yeah, absolutely. Now, do you have to bounce? Yeah, I do have to it's, bounce. It's bounce time, isn't it? It's Ian said earlier, time. he was like, 
got a hard stop at half past and I'm like it's past half past dude <laughs> I, I, I want to keep talking about it I mean dude, I, I feel, dude whenever we do these man I feel like I could talk to you for ages ages I know, ages, I, know, ages. I, know, I, know yeah. I know I know we'll, we'll, we'll maybe do like a round two because I'd love to get into sort of like PJ pickups music man pickups could be yeah. fun to, to talk about as well because they were yeah. they were like maybe the most surprising to me because I, I just imagined them like sounding like this honky bridge pickup just and, and they're not they're, they're not that. They're actually much more versatile than you think. Here, here's what we should do. Next episode or next pickup episode that we do, we should have some examples. I have a lot of examples of these things that I can swap out and demonstrate very quickly and How distinctly. Yes. So we can say, here is the difference between jazz jazz and 60 spacing on a jazz bass. We'll hear it. Here's, here's what a Rickenbacker neck pickup sounds like. We're going to hear it. Here's oh. what active EMGs sound like. We're going to hear it. Let's do. Let's let. Let's do okay. it. Okay, we're going to go so through. Go, we're going to. We're going. Yeah. The proof is in the pudding, dude. We're going to give you the pudding. This is part one. Is part one. Is this the first time we've done a part one and part two? Maybe. Yeah, I think, I, no, we did a. I think we did. <laughs> I think we did like slap part one and two ages ago. You know, like a, we did slap. I'll tell you what, dude. We've done a lot of these podcasts. I know we have. And we appreciate yeah. you listening, faithful SBL podcast listener. I was thinking about it the other day. I was actually pondering. I was like, I wonder if I've spoken to Ian more than any other human ever <laughs> in my life. <laughs> maybe like, so, too. It's, it's me maybe. I know. Like, maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe. That's freaking weird, right? Yeah. I think we've done like 80 episodes. Yeah. 90. That's a I, lot of I'm, hours. Do you think Do you think you've spoken to your mum for like 90 hours? Maybe. Maybe. maybe I'm like ranking like number three or four or something. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it's I mean dude, but it's every, there, dude. it is and, and every week it grows a little bit more. Every week yeah. we're notching up that leaderboard, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, amazing. Right, dudes, you know where to find us, obviously. Go check the website out, scottspacelessons.com. Leave us a review over on iTunes and yes, all of the please. places that we do these podcasts. It really helps us get the word out about this podcast. And if you know of any other bass players or musicians that want to listen to us, two old little bass grannies <laughs> talking about bass, racking up those points, yeah, baby. Uh, send them in this direction. And Take next easy, episode, guys. part oh, yeah. two pickups the pudding oh yeah boom <laughs> you've heard it here take it easy guys see you in a bit bye cheers everybody <laughs>